Good evening and Happy New Year from the campus of Jacksonville University here at historic Swisher Gymnasium. We are here tonight as the 7-7 seven and seven Jacksonville University Dolphins meet the 4-7 and seven South Carolina State Bulldogs. Andrew Gibson alongside Aaron Hardy and Alexis Pierce will have her on with us in just a moment. But we go into this game tonight with both teams, uh, Aaron, just trying to find their stride as they head into the conference season. And it's a big time game for Jacksonville. They're playing against uh, up, are they playing against South Carolina State. South Carolina brings a lot of competition with Apple White. He's averaging almost a double-double. David Bell's in the conference. He's the only person in the conference averaging a double-double. So I, I look for a big matchup between those two. Dave Bell came into this game as a game time decision, and he is certainly one of the highlights of this matchup between Jacksonville and South Carolina State. As you see, his 7-7 seven and seven record for the Dolphins. They come off of a game at Clemson a couple of days ago where they really battled in that game and then the second half just went cold shooting. They are really going to have to try to get that going in the second half, especially tonight. Yeah, they really missed Dave Bell uh, against Clemson. He's their low post president. He's their defensive anchor. So hopefully having him back tonight will change the output of the game. And Jacksonville, of course, also allowing the second fewest points per game among the A-Sun teams. Let's now go to the sideline. Alexis Pierce is with us. Alexis. Important to highlight the key matchup between Dave Bell and Applewhite of South Carolina State. Applewhite is currently averaging 11 and 6 for the Savannah for the South Carolina, and Dave Bell is averaging 12 and 10. Uh, it's important that we highlight that that the Dolphins keep Dave Bell out of foul trouble to pick up two quick fouls. And on the flip side of that, being able to guard Applewhite and not allowing him to get going offensively. Back to you, Aaron. All right, thank you very much, Alexis Pierce there on our sideline. And, you know, she talked about Dave Bell, as we mentioned a moment ago. Mm -hmm. We also have to look at Damani Applewhite as well. He is a, certainly a key contributor for South Carolina State. Well, that is a look at just a couple of notes before we tip things off here tonight from Jacksonville University, the Dolphins against the Bulldogs, coming up next on ESPN+. Plus. tip-off here tonight between Jacksonville and South Carolina State and the JU Dolphins retain possession to open this game. Andrew Gibson alongside Aaron Hardy and Alexis Pierce. The Dolphins come in at 7-7 seven and seven this season. The finale of non-conference play against this 4-7 and seven South Carolina State Bulldogs team. Uh, I want to say the bad thing about these type of games, you just hope not to come in with any rust. You've been off a couple of days, you had the Christmas break, so you just want to come out open it up with a lot of energy. Dave Bell misses underneath. He missed the last game against Clemson. Here up with a shot, and there's an early score there for Tariq Simmons. Amani Santos with the basketball top of the key. Coach Murray Garvin said that Santos is the key to Jacksonville's car, and now the Dolphins will turn it over. It, it looks like the Dolphins, as I said, came out a little rusty. Dave Bell shot an air ball on his first shot, came back, turned the ball right over. Hopefully they can get back into it. South Carolina State bringing it up quickly. That's what they want to do offensively. They're a team that really wants to be known for their defense. And they've played a couple of games this year, not really by design, that have scored nearly in the 90s. And that's not the team they want to be, but they can really try to push it up the floor against you. Yeah, they're definitely going to have to do that with Dave Bell in the post. If they can beat him up the court, then they can possibly get easier shots and easier layups. Foul against Jacksonville on the floor, South Carolina State with the basketball now in the offensive end in the front court. This is Zach Sellers. He's one of the nine transfers that came in this season for South Carolina State. Usually when a team has a lot of transfers, you, you kind of think that they're in a win-now mode. They're coming in with a lot of experience coming from junior college. These guys aren't freshmen. They aren't sophomores. Typically, they're juniors and seniors. So they're looking to come in and play and establish. Sellers has started eight of ten games himself coming into this contest tonight. Gets another start as well for South Carolina State. Dolphins trying to find something offensively here. And that three ball no good for Kevin Norman, who had a game-high 16 against Clemson. He was one of the bright spots against Clemson uh, with Dave Bell out of, out of the game. 
And there's a turnover there for South Carolina State. 2-0 early lead for the Bulldogs against Jacksonville. The 15th game of the year for the Dolphins under head coach Tony Jasek in his sixth season here in Jacksonville. Both Jasek and coach Murray Garvin have stayed connected ever since they met each other coaching in the Carolinas early in their career. There's a lob. There's a nice shot underneath for Dave Bell. Yeah, there you go right there. You got to get him going early, get him something easy, a nice pass right in front of the goal. He can just easily dunk it. Quickly coming back is South Carolina State. They're really trying to get the basketball in the hands of Zach Sellers. And you've certainly got to watch Damani Applewhite. Jacksonville with the rebound. South Carolina State really trying some three-point shots here early, Aaron. Yeah, they're staying, staying away from uh, Dave Bell. They know that anything coming his way, he could block it. Another early possession in this game for South Carolina State. And one of the things that Coach Murray Garvin told me today was they want to try to get a shot for the team, not necessarily the individual player. And one thing, Aaron, they've done so far effectively is some good offensive rebounds. Yeah, they, they're getting a lot of second shots, which, which isn't a good sign for the Dolphins because if they get those second shots and they actually make them, the lead wouldn't be 2-2. Two to two. It'll probably be 7-2 to two right now. But luckily, they're missing them, and hopefully they can continue to uh, play good, better defense. Two to shoot. Now underneath, another shot clock violation. Nearly for South Carolina State. That's the second one so far already. Yeah, as I said, Dave Bell, he's in the paint, blocking everything that comes his way. What does an inside presence like Dave Bell present when you're trying to drive that lane? Well, it adds that perimeter defense. It makes them speed up, makes them want to make decisions that they're not necessarily accustomed to making. Once you speed them up, they get to going, and they forget he's in there. And he comes out of, with the nine-feet wingspan, and right there, there's a block shot. Jacksonville now driving the lane. Ball goes nearly around the entire rim and out. And the Bulldogs are back in transition. It's good to see Destin Barnes driving the ball. He, uh, he's been their best perimeter shooter uh, this season. But it's good to see him trying to catch the defense off guard because I know the scouting report has been for him to shoot the ball. Coming back quickly with it is Santos. And another missed opportunity on the offensive end there for Jacksonville. It looks like both teams are a little rusty this game. <laughs> well, we, we talk about that layoff. What does that do as well for a team that, you know, they've had the holiday break, so it's been a couple days since they've played. And in practice, it's hard to simulate uh, game time speed. You try your best to play a little live, but it's just difficult to uh, simulate that. There's Damani Applewhite leading this Bulldogs team over 12 points a game, six rebounds. He's an all MEAC player. There's a three from the top of the key from Amani Santos. Yeah, he's the, the straw that gets this team going, right? He uh, He's their floor general. He comes down, makes plays, gets everybody involved. Amani Santos, the senior guard out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Second best in the A-Sun in minutes per game. He's somebody that rarely comes off the floor for Jacksonville. Yeah, uh, they have Mo Arnold uh, behind him coming off at playing the point guard position, but he's a freshman. He uh, lacks experience right now. So with Santos in, he, he brings that. Five to four, our early score. 14.52 left to go in our first half. We've got a timeout on the floor here from Jacksonville. For decades, Patrick and Patrick has been known to handle many of the most complex and challenging Welcome back here to Jacksonville University. Tony Jasic and the JU Dolphins hosting Murray Garvin and the South Carolina State Bulldogs out of Orangeburg, South Carolina. There you see Tony Jasic in his sixth season as the head coach here in Jacksonville. South Carolina State with the basketball now in the front court. And there's a three-pointer blocked that time by the Dolphins out of the timeout. A little bit out of control there into the paint, Aaron. Yeah, he's not the guy you want to give it to running full speed uh, outside of the paint. 
Most of the time, you give him the ball, you want it inside the perimeter. He can easily get a layup. He's very athletic. Another opportunity down low for South Carolina State and a foul on the floor against the Dolphins. Bryce, Bryce Workman, he's one of our best, one of Jacksonville's best low post scorers. He's a real low post threat. When he gets the ball, he looks to score every single time. So now going to the line this time. Here's Damani Applewhite at the line for South Carolina State. Applewhite this season shooting nearly 80%. It's a good percentage for him, about 78% from the line. Yeah, these are the easiest points you can get as a basketball player. No, it should be no pressure, but, you know, there's that announcer's curse <laughs> where we always jinx them. High arcing shot is no good, so Applewhite misses both at the line, and now the Dolphins trying to push things. What do you see in the early in these possessions offensively for Jacksonville? They're still trying to figure out their rhythm. Uh, they're coming down out of control sometimes. Sometimes they come come down, they get a good shot. Like I, as I said earlier and alluded to, uh, they're just trying to knock that rust off. They haven't played live basketball, uh, competitive basketball in a few days uh, with the Christmas break. And now they just have to find that rhythm that they had before we went on, they went on break. I just saw Deontay Wood with a opportunity down low. He's somebody that Coach Jasic really likes and what he's really been doing in recent games really has had major strides. He's also getting healthier, missed a year with a foot injury. Yeah, definitely brings a lot of energy off the bench. Uh, usually when uh, Justin Barnes goes out, they bring him in and he brings a lot of energy defensively. He gets the, the putbacks. He's, a, he's really a, a workhorse. You put him in, he just does everything. Amani Santos gives Jacksonville a four-point lead. With that three-point shot, the field general knocking down a three for the Dolphins. Bulldogs with it front court. Now they'll try a three. If Jacksonville can continue to play this type of defense and uh, allow them to shoot those contested three-point shots, uh, Jacksonville's going to have a pretty easy game because they're not able to hit them right now. That missed three on that last possession for South Carolina State by Tashambe Riley. He is not one guy that really you don't see these often in really any sport in college. A sixth year senior, he has uh, had a medical red shirt, uh, really catching his stride of late here for the Bulldogs. Uh, I think it's a great thing for him. Uh, if basketball doesn't work in his favor, he could possibly have his bachelor's and master's by the time he's finished with school. There's Applewhite on the assist that time from Riley. And the story with Riley is that he played his first three years with South Carolina State broke his ankle, transferred to South Alabama, got hurt in the summer, and then now he's back for a sixth year with the Bulldogs. Well, they always say there's no place like home. And he definitely came back to South Carolina State. David Bell coming back in for Bryce Workman. Workman got the start against Clemson with Dave Bell out of the game a couple of Fridays ago. Workman started off the season very hot. He had two back-to-back 15-point -back uh, outings. Uh, he kind of cooled off, and he's, he's picked it back up recently. Now a two-point game. South Carolina State trying a three. That time, really not much arc on that shot. A line drive toward the basket, no good. I'm not sure they've made a three all game, but they continue to shoot it. <laughs> Anthony McCallum. Really asserting himself both on offense and defense of late for Jacksonville. And that's good to see the senior come in and, and do that. He started the season off pretty slow uh, offensive-wise. Defensively, he's always been engaged, but now he's starting so to come along to offensively, and that's what this team needs. Foul on the floor that time against South Carolina State. And Jacksonville finally with a Mo shot underneath Arnold. with Mo Arnold. You mentioned him earlier. Yeah, he's, he's definitely a, a up-and-coming freshman on this team. Brings a lot of energy off the bench. Uh, he's recently been making a lot more perimeter shots. Early in the season, he struggled a little bit, but now he's starting to come into his own. Had the first start of his career earlier this year in that overtime game against Western Carolina that was played right here at historic Swisher Gymnasium. 
And there's the first three hit there by South Carolina State. Eventually one was going to fall there. As you can see, they were going to continually shoot him. And that's Jamari Etene with the three. Great South ball movement by the Dolphins just then. Uh, they moved it. Everybody it seemed like they touched the ball, got an open shot. It just happened to miss it. One thing that Tony Jasic was telling me earlier this week is team is a team in a sense that they rely on a lot of guys, so you're going to get a lot of looks for a lot of different guys. Yeah, right now uh, the Dolphins, their scoring balance is, is pretty balanced. Everybody's getting involved. You have a couple of guys in double figures, a couple of guys right under double figures. There's a really good team effort every night. One point margin right now. South Carolina State with the lead and the ball now in transition. And they knock down another three this time. And yeah, they're starting to feel it now. Jamari Etene leads us to our break. South Carolina State with a four point lead. Under 12 minutes to go in this game. In the first half. And Welcome you back here to historic Swisher Gymnasium. Jacksonville trails South Carolina State 14 to 10. And you see now the last couple of buckets there by the Bulldogs. They've really caught fire from deep range as Jamari Etene, the senior guard from Atlanta, Georgia, has knocked down a couple threes. Yeah, he's definitely caught an uh, early rhythm here. Earlier in South Carolina, they weren't uh, shooting the ball well, but with him coming in, they definitely came in with a lot of energy now. Well, out of the timeout, Jacksonville turns it over as Trey Sides has come in the ball game, and they could not get the ball into the front court that time, a turnover, and turns into points for South Carolina State. Yeah, Trey Sides, he's another freshman. Coach plays a lot. Uh, looks a little nervous coming in. Hopefully he can get, it to, uh, get everything together, get his confidence back. Andrew Gibson, Aaron Hardy, the former J.U. Dolphin, here with you tonight. As the Dolphins and the Bulldogs battle here in Jacksonville. Both teams closing out the non-conference schedule tonight. And right now you see uh, Monty Santos not in the game. Jacksonville looks a little disorganized on the offensive end. As, as we alluded to earlier, he's the general on offense. He gets everybody going. He puts everybody in the right place. But right now they're leaving it up to freshman Mo Arnold. So hopefully he can get the job done. And talking to Coach... Garvin from South Carolina State this morning. The thing that he mentioned about Santos was that he is the key to Jacksonville's car. I thought it was an interesting way he put that. He is. Without him on the court, it's hard to see Jacksonville getting anything good going offensively. With him on the court, he knows exactly where everybody is and supposed to be. He tells people where they're supposed to go. Trey Sides comes up with it for Jacksonville on the steal. South Carolina State bench wanted a travel call, and it turns into points for the Dolphins. Destin Barnes, he's the shooter on the team. If you're coming down on the fast break, you need to find that guy because he's looking to spot up and shoot it every single time. Three-point shot from the junior from Chicago. The A-Sun newcomer of the week just a few weeks back for Jacksonville. And there's another shot from long range from Etienne. He misses it, but they clean it up underneath. Another offensive rebound. As we uh, said earlier, they continue to offensive rebound. Eventually, they're going to have the lead. And right now, they're up five points. Jacksonville needs to see something here from Dave Bell, possibly. Get him underneath in terms of their offense on this side. He still looks a little uh, limpy right now. He's running up and down the court. Limping, looks like he's still a little sore. Right now they're bringing Bryce Workman right back in. Bryce Workman does check in back for Jacksonville. Nearly seven points, six rebounds per game for the sophomore from Tampa. Stands at six foot seven, the forward for Jacksonville. Also, you see they brought Amante Santos back in and uh, took Trey Sides out. The coach saw that the offense was disorganized, brought him right back in. Oh, he talked about just the minutes per game for Santos, over 32 minutes per game for Jacksonville. He's right back in the game. Definitely can't have that guy out too long if you want to win the game. Three-point opportunity, no good that time for Destin Barnes. Yeah. 
Zach Sellers an interesting story for South Carolina State. He was a transfer from Savannah State. They dropped down a level in basketball, so Savannah State was able to give the players that they had an opportunity to go elsewhere. And so that brought Zach Sellers to South Carolina State. And that's good for him. He wanted to continue his basketball career playing Division I basketball, and that was very generous of South Carolina, uh, Savannah State to allow and grant that access. Now it's a seven point lead for the Bulldogs. Now five to shoot. An empty possession there for yeah. Jacksonville. Great defense by South Carolina State. Just, and they forced up a very, very tough shot by the freshman Moana. Shot from just inside the arc by Etienne again. He's really caught fire for the Bulldogs. He has. Somebody has to step up on Jacksonville and play some defense on that guy. You have to see that he's making shots right now. Some of the shots have really been uncontested at times. Deep three there for Jacksonville. Barnes has tried a couple from long range in the last few minutes. And South Carolina has definitely sped up the pace of this game, uh, and Jacksonville just hasn't been able to keep up. Greg Simmons with a three. The junior from Columbia, South Carolina, the transfer from Panola College, pours in another three-pointer for South Carolina State. Yeah, we said earlier they weren't making any threes, and now it seems like that's all they're making. <laughs> Now Kevin Norman knocked down nearly an NBA range three from the left wing that time. He's definitely a spark plug for the Dolphins. If he can get going, he can definitely help them get back in the game and stay in the game. Norman averaging nearly 10 a game for Coach Jassic and the Dolphins. We mentioned he was certainly a bright spot against Clemson with 16. Step back three that time by Etienne is no good. That one, another line drive to the basket. But they're definitely hunting the three. They have it going now. And the opportunities in the low post have been tough there for Jacksonville as we head now to a timeout. 5.51 to go, 25-16. The Bulldogs lead the Dolphins here at historic Swisher Gymnasium in Jacksonville. First personal foul, second team foul. Time on the floor, this is a media timeout. Fight on ESPNplus.com slash PPV. Welcome back here to Jacksonville University where the Dolphins trail the Bulldogs 25-16. Jacksonville looking for their eighth win in this series all time, Aaron. They have really controlled this series of late. Yeah, right now the thing that's keeping South Carolina State ahead of Jacksonville is the offensive rebounds, and Jacksonville has six turnovers. And that's one thing you want to limit when you're playing in games like this, close games like this. You want to uh, cut down the turnovers and want to also keep the other team off the offensive boards. Bryce Workman at the line for Jacksonville. One of the certainly the key figures in this first half, Aaron, is the disparity in especially offensive rebounds. South Carolina State with six, Jacksonville only with two. Yeah, and with Dave Bell out of the game, you're gonna have to, uh, it's called gang rebounding, team rebounding. Everybody has to come back and help on the uh, defensive glass for Jacksonville if you wanna stop them from getting offensive rebounds. Seven and seven Jacksonville against four and seven South Carolina State. And the Bulldogs with the early advantage. Great offensive uh, ball movement by South Carolina State. I believe everybody touched the ball then. They moved it around the perimeter, got a paint touch for somebody dribbling into the paint, they just, they, and they picked up a foul on Jacksonville. South Carolina State has not won a road game yet this season. They're 0-6, so a win tonight against Jacksonville would be their first of the season. They have really faced a tough non-conference schedule, that being the biggest reason why they haven't won a game so far on the road. 
and you got to know as a, as a team coming in that their coach is drilling that in their head. Like, we haven't won on the road yet. We need this win. And that's why they come out and play so hard now. Another three-pointer this time from Sellers. Jacksonville with a quick shot coming back in transition off of that made basket for South Carolina State. Really for Jacksonville, Aaron, and tell me what you see here. The Dolphins, their possessions really haven't lasted too many uh, seconds or rather minutes uh, on their front court side. Yes, yeah, South Carolina State has definitely sped up the game, and Jacksonville is playing their game, basically. Jacksonville is not playing the, the way that they usually play, which is, you know, get a couple of paint touches, get some inside-outside movement. Right now they're playing South Carolina State's game, and it's working in South Carolina's favor. Well, one of the things is uh, South Carolina State misses that shot. Tony Jasic told me this morning that South Carolina State does a really good job of just making you uncomfortable, not letting you try to get into the rhythm or certainly the way that you want to play. Right, and you can see after every dead ball, after every made shot, South Carolina State is hopping into a 2-2-1 two -two press, trying to control the pace, slow Jacksonville down, get them uncomfortable. South Carolina State, a team that will pressure you defensively. Aaron, you mentioned the 2-2-1. Two -two They'll also run a diamond press on you as well. Yeah, and that's partially why Jacksonville has those turnovers that they have. They're, they're getting out of control. They're forcing them to speed up and take a uh, quick shot. There's Dave Bell, and he's excited and I think frustrated at the same time that he's not been able to get so, too much going early on here. Yeah, he's definitely a focal point on the defensive end for South Carolina State. They definitely want to make sure he doesn't get off. Now the Bulldogs give up another basket against the Dolphins. Deontay Wood with a transition basket off the steal. And as I said, he comes off the bridge. That's what he brings. He brings defensive tenacity and energy. Deontay Wood, a highly decorated high school basketball player, a four-star recruit initially went to Alabama and transferred here to Jacksonville. And this is what you expect from him. Coming from a Power 5 school, you expect him to uh, do this and more. Another point, a couple of that time for Damani Applewhite, the leader of this Bulldogs team, over 12 per game. Another early touch in that possession for Bell. And there's a three for the Dolphins. Derek Flowers. One thing about Flowers, he's leading the team in three-point percentage. Uh, he's one of their best shooters uh, besides Destin Barnes. So when he comes off the bench, as, as a scouting report, you should know that he's a shooter. That's what he does. Derek Flowers also a winner and won four state championships in high school. That's very uncommon. Yeah, he was definitely on a great team. He was one of the uh, great players on this team at that. Flowers out of Frisco, Texas for Jacksonville. And there's another three that time for Zach Sellers. And he just keeps knocking them down for the Bulldogs. One thing the Dolphins do not want to do is get into a, a shooting contest with this team. You have to get some stops in order to win. And right on cue. They take another three and miss. This is not the type of game that Jacksonville is accustomed to coming down, shooting quick shots, shooting threes. Two minutes left before halftime. Just under two minutes left to go as we head closer to halftime here at Jacksonville University Bulldogs on top. Media time. Welcome back here to Jacksonville as both the Dolphins and the Bulldogs have really attempted several threes in this first half. Aaron, South Carolina State, 5 of 15. Jacksonville, 5 of 14. They've really been shooting the three ball early. Yes, they have. Uh, typically, this isn't Jacksonville's game. They have a lot of guys who have scored in the low post, but they're trying to keep up, and they have to keep up with South Carolina State. So they're forced to speed up their game, shoot more quick shots, shoot more threes. South Carolina State, a team averaging 69 points per game. This is a team that really 
averages three, rather five three-point shots made per game. They've already hit their average in the first half. Yeah, and this is not a good sign if you're a Jacksonville Dolphin because if their average is five and they've already hit it, we have a whole other half to go. <laughs> another key number as uh, Applewhite is at the line for South Carolina State. The rebounding disparity again for the Bulldogs in favor of Jacksonville, 12, 21 to 12. South Carolina State out rebounding the Dolphins. Yeah, they definitely are dominating the Dolphins on the glass, and that's that's not usually what you see with the Dolphins with Dave Bell in the pre, in the post. He's a double double guy, meaning he's getting double figured uh, rebounds. Dave Bell, in fact, the only player in the A Sun that is averaging a double double. And certainly you would think with his presence that Jacksonville would be able to have a little bit more inside presence. Yeah, I, I know he's been nagging, that has nagging injuries. He's limping up and down the court, so he's playing through an injury right now. Uh, but if he's hurt, he needs to let the coach know because right now he's not really helping him. Dave Bell defending that time on the missed shot. Closing in on the halftime break here in Jacksonville. And that was a basket, nearly an and one opportunity for the Dolphins. If that one had fallen, really would have been a, a good fortune there for the Dolphins. Yeah, Deontay Wood is definitely playing very hard tonight, defensively and offensively. He's their spark plug tonight. He's come in and done a great job. For the Dolphins, shooting two. Deontay Wood going to the line, the redshirt freshman from Anniston, Alabama. You're from Alabama. You familiar with Anniston? Yeah, it's maybe an hour away from me. I'm from Birmingham, so I definitely know the area. Knocks that one down. The redshirt freshman guard. The 1A player of the year in the state of Alabama in 2018. Also the ASA newcomer of the week on December 16th, just a few days ago, as we head closer to a new year and a new decade. How about that? Yeah. 2020 is already upon us. Feels like it was j just July. <laughs> One minute to play. One minute to go in the first half. South Carolina State with the advantage and the basketball. Yeah, right there, Deontay Wood got caught being a little too aggressive. <laughs> got caught for a cheap foul. South Carolina State right now four and seven. Coach Garvin told me they're just about a game or two behind where they thought they would be in terms of wins, four wins early in the season, but they're looking pretty solid here in the first half. Yeah, especially with their uh, out-of-conference schedule. They've definitely played a lot of tough teams in their out-of-conference schedule, but it's going to benefit them in the long run once they get into conference play. South Carolina State has played Memphis, the number nine team in the country. Vanderbilt, a solid SEC team. And the, really the king so far of the A-Sun, Liberty, who's 14 and one in their non-conference. Yeah, and right then and there, you see Dave Bell in the low post uh, looking to dominate. Hopefully they can carry that into the second half. South Carolina State takes a timeout, but we'll stay with it right here. 33 seconds to go in our first half. Bulldogs with a five-point advantage. What are you seeing so far in this first half, Aaron? Uh, with Jacksonville, they need to get their their own rhythm going, not play to the pace that South Carolina State is trying to get them to play to with quick shots, uh, forced passes. Once they get into a rhythm, let Dave Bell get it get set inside the post, move the ball around the perimeter. They can easily come back and take this take control of this game. South Carolina State has lost their last two games. They lost against USC Upstate. And then also against College of Charleston, this is actually the first game that they've played outside the state of South Carolina since going back to November because they played three straight home games in Orangeburg, South Carolina, which is about three and a half hours north of Jacksonville. And they come to the state of Florida tonight against JU, playing this Dolphins team that already has seven wins under their belt here in 2019. Great place to be in December. Who wouldn't want to be in Florida in December? <laughs> 20 seconds before the half here. South Carolina State and Applewhite holding for nearly the last shot. Now Jacksonville with an opportunity. The Anthony McCallum in transition missed the shot, but a foul is called. Yeah, he got called with a charge, a little out of control. They forced him, as we said, South Carolina is speeding them up, making them make plays they're not used to making. So 
the Bulldogs will have five and a half to shoot it here before halftime. Number 14, Cole Arnold for J. Anthony McCollum. Just to wrap up that thought on South Carolina State's schedule, they'll begin conference play in the MEAC on January 4th against Coppin State. Three to shoot now. Shot missed from long range, and that'll be our half. South Carolina State takes a five-point advantage into the break against Jacksonville. The Bulldogs looking for their fifth win of the season as they try to pick up this win against Jacksonville. We're at the half in Jacksonville. Side leader and finishes. The old man still got it. The Gregor Cowboy. Buy it on ESPNPlus.com slash PPB. Welcome to back here to Jacksonville University where the Dolphins trail the South Carolina State Bulldogs 35-30 at halftime. Andrew Gibson along with former JU Dolphin Avon uh, Hardy with us here tonight. And uh, what do you see from that first half, 35-30, with the Dolphins trailing against the Bulldogs? Well, you definitely see South Carolina uh, State. They came out a little slow, but they definitely picked it up fast with a lot of quick three-pointers, which led Jacksonville to try to compete with them and play into their game, which Jacksonville is uncomfortable doing. And now you have a five-point lead by South Carolina State. Well, the rebound margin as we look at it at halftime, 21 to 17. It's gotten a little bit better in favor of Jacksonville, but the Bulldogs have really uh, taken advantage inside the post, which is a little bit surprising given the fact that Jacksonville has an inside presence like Bell. Yeah, early on, South Carolina Upstate came out and their whole team was going to the offensive glass and they got a lot of second chance points. With Dave Bell being hampered by injuries, he, uh, he's not looking like himself, but hopefully in the second half he can definitely pick it up. Dave Bell among a couple of Dolphins with six points in the first half. Amani Santos, really one of the leaders of this Jacksonville team, he's got six points as well. We saw him in and out of the game in the first half. You'd like to see him play a little bit more in the second half. Yeah, you definitely cannot take that guy out of the game for too long. He's the straw that makes the this, this team go. As soon as he gets on the court, he knows exactly where everybody needs to be. He puts them in position to score, puts them in the position to do their best. Damani Applewhite with eight points to lead South Carolina State here in the first half. 35 to 30 is our halftime break. The Bulldogs of South Carolina State against the JU Dolphins here at halftime at Historic Swisher Gymnasium. Try to keep up. The Bulldogs of South Carolina State with a five-point lead here at halftime as we look at some of the stats from the first half and some of the highlights as well. Andrew Gibson alongside Aaron Hardy and Alexis Pierce. And the Dolphins have really, they began struggling early in the game with the possessions that really kind of came up empty, but they finally found a little bit of their range and rhythm late in the first half. The Dolphins, 5 of 16, uh, 5 of 14, rather, from three-point range. South Carolina State, they really filled it up from three-point range as well, going 5 of 16 as we look at some of the first half uh, highlights. The Dolphins really tried to once again possess the basketball and try to knock down a few shots. That really plagued them in the second half in their last game against Clemson. Yeah, hopefully they, they come out this second half. They come out aggressive early. They don't let South Carolina get into their rhythm and their game plan and allow Dave Bell to be a presence in the, in the paint on the offensive and de defensive end, and they can definitely come back on this thing. There you see Damani Applewhite pouring in a couple of points. He had eight points in the first half for South Carolina State. Both teams shot 40% or better from the field. We talked about the rebound margin early in the game. South Carolina State really had a decided advantage, but the Dolphins have narrowed that gap 21-17 in terms of the rebounding in the first half. Yeah, definitely South Carolina State came out early as a team, rebounding very well on the off, on the defensive end and on the offensive side. Uh, Jacksonville, if they, can get, if they can get Dave Bell going, get him playing his normal game, they can easily come back on the re rebounding side and definitely on the scoring side. Both teams shooting over 30% from three-point range. One thing we haven't talked about was the turnovers. Four in the first half only for South Carolina, seven for Jacksonville. The Bulldogs have a five-point advantage as we near the break to start the second half. Uh-huh. Go, 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 Lock it, find it, start it from anywhere with remote connect.
Apple White has been a fourth down low for South Carolina State. But with that being said, they are getting a lot of defensive rebounds and offensive techniques. They have seven offensive rebounds, allowing us to have 10-point second-chance opportunities for South Carolina State. I would like to see Jacksonville get out and box out and get some more rebounds and get, get going on the offensive end. We'll be back after the break. Alexis Pierce. Lock it, find it, start it from anywhere with Remote Connect. Welcome back here to Jacksonville University. We're at historic Swisher Gymnasium as the South Carolina State Bulldogs looking for their fifth win of the season, taking on the Jacksonville University Dolphins. The Dolphins coming in at a 500 record in non-conference, their 15th game of the season. They're 7-7 seven seven through 14, and the Bulldogs of South Carolina State lead coming out of halftime 35-30. Andrew Gibson alongside Aaron Hardy, Alexis Pierce. And Aaron, what do you want to see here early from Jacksonville in the second half? These first four minutes will determine a lot. With Jacksonville, you want to come out and play with a lot of energy, uh, play like you want to win the game here. You want to definitely put your imprint on this game and make it known. Monty Santos controls it in the front court for Jacksonville. A quick whistle. Santos, we've talked about him and how many minutes that he does play for the Dolphins. He had a career best 21 points in another home game earlier this season. This is the fifth home contest for Jacksonville. Earlier this season against Johnson, Amani Santos had 21, so he is certainly a guy that can fill it up from anywhere on the floor. Yeah, he definitely can. That's one of the good things about this guy. He can distribute the ball to his team, and when they need him to score, he definitely can do that. Jacksonville just trying to find something offensively. That was Dolphins. a good it was a good shot by Destin Barnes. They, they got the ball inside the paint. They had a, uh, an aggressive drive by Monty Santos, and he just happened to miss a shot on that. Both teams shot about 40% from the field in the first half. And Dave Bell gets it stripped underneath. And that's what happens when you bring the ball down low if you're Dave Bell. You have a lot of little guards out there, and that's what they that's what they look for. They look to strip the ball away from you. They can't get it from you while you have it up high, but as soon as you bring it down low, they're there to take it away. South Carolina State lost only two starters a year ago. They have nine newcomers in this game this season. One guy who's not a newcomer to this program is Damani Applewhite. Knocks down another jump shot that time for Applewhite, he's already in double figures. He's one of those guys who has an unorthodox game. He's left-handed. Uh, I'm not sure if the Dolphins recognize that yet, that most of the time when he posts up, he spins to the right, and he's getting a lot of fouls on him. When he drives, he goes left every time. And there's a missed opportunity underneath that time by Dave Bell. Jacksonville certainly trying to get in the ball here early in the second half. As I said earlier, if he goes left, he's driving it left. If he goes right, he's shooting it every single time. That's one thing you got to pick up on if you're the Dolphins, if you want to keep this guy under, under control. Is that a situation for Bell underneath defensively? He's just not trying to pick up a foul in that situation. Yeah, with that, you got to have a, a good team effort. You want to come down and help him out if you know he could possibly be in foul trouble. Have one of the little guards try to dig it out from him. Battle underneath for the rebound, South Carolina State with a nine-point lead against Jacksonville. You know, Aaron, we talk about just how you can build a program. South Carolina State has nine transfers coming in this year, and among those, Tashambe Riley, who hasn't had a, a tremendous game here tonight, but he's a guy that really uh, has produced in the last couple of games for South Carolina State, but we've seen a lot of Zach Sellers, and he's another transfer, one of nine. When you have a lot of transfers like that, you bring in a lot of experience. They've already played collegiate ball, even if it's on the junior college level or the small Division One or Division Two school, they have that experience. So it's not like you're bringing in a freshman who doesn't know the game or have that knowledge of the game. Shot that time by Destin Barnes, but a foul on the floor against the Bulldogs. South Carolina State foul number one, 
That is number two on Tariq Simmons for the Bulldogs. Great aggressive drive by Destin Barnes. His outside shot hasn't been falling like it usually does. So he wants to go to the free throw line and try to get a rhythm. Destin Barnes, his last game, six points and a rebound to go along with his points against Clemson. Lane violation against Jacksonville, so we're going to wave off the shot. South Carolina State struggled last year. They were 8-26 and finished eighth in the conference in the MEAC. This year they're projected to finish fifth. And right now at a four and seven record. Yeah, you can definitely see why they're projected to uh, finish in the middle of the pack, almost in the, the top the top portion of the pack. These guys, they play aggressive, they play as a team. Everybody knows that Apple White's the guy, so they definitely try to get him his touches. And that just shows you how good of the team chemistry they have. Coach Murray Garvin standing up with his, still got his jacket on. Sometimes these coaches, when they get to the second half, the jacket comes off. Yeah, definitely. Either if they're uh, a little bit hot down there or they're hot because their team isn't playing well. Yeah, uh, when I was in school, second half, you never saw my coach with, the, with their jacket on. <laughs> and there'll be a shot clock, nearly a shot clock violation. There's another scramble for it, and the Dolphins come back out with it. Dolphins miss an open three that time by Kevin Norman. Yeah, he's definitely one of those guys, once he gets going, it's hard to get him, uh, get him off. He, he's one of the spark plugs on this team. He definitely comes in with a lot of offensive impact. Coach Garvin, you know, you see a lot of this in really any coach at any level. You've got to have a guy that has got a little bit of motivation sense to him. That's in every coach. They want to try to motivate their team. But Coach Garvin is actually a motivational speaker. You can book him to speak to anybody, whether it be a team or your staff at work. Coach Garvin is a guy that has his own website. You can book him as a motivational speaker. So he's one of these guys that can really fire up his team. And that's a, that's a great thing to have on a team, especially a collegiate team. You have a bunch of young men looking for mentors, looking for men to look up to. And, and if he's doing that, that helps him be on the team. Bryce Workman with an and one opportunity for Jacksonville. Coach Garvin in his South seventh Carolina season at South Carolina State. As he's trying to lead what would be their first win on the road this season. They're up 41-33 here in Jacksonville. Friendly agents understand your dilemma. Jacksonville trying to edge away at this lead against South Carolina State. As you look at Bryce Workman, a shot underneath and, a, and one opportunity as he will go to the line here for Jacksonville. The Dolphins trailing 41-33. As uh, so we're just a few moments here into this second half, Aaron. Hey, you definitely want to get Bryce Workman going, especially with David Bell on the bench and being hampered by injury. Bryce Workman has to come in and, and impact the game. He knows he's going to get a lot of minutes tonight. He has to come in and make sure those minutes are productive. Bryce Workman got the start against Clemson in the last game when Dave Bell sat due to an injury. He, Bell was a game-time decision tonight for Coach Jassic in Jacksonville, but able to suit up and play in this game tonight after missing the contest against Clemson. And a big man underneath that time for South Carolina State as they once again, they're trying to pound the paint this time now in the second half. Yeah, they definitely just did that. Uh, he, he definitely looks like he's above 250. Looks like he can play defensive end on, the, on their football team. That's a Lafayette Stone. He stands at 6 feet 10, 325 pounds. Don't see too many 300 plus guys on the basketball court. Yeah, he definitely moved, moved our guys out of the way. <laughs> Lafayette Stone, a junior from Clinton, South Carolina. A transfer from Northern Oklahoma Community College. As he remains in the game and he's posted up underneath in the paint for South Carolina State. Definitely a big force to give Applewhite a break, give him a breather. He's going to come back in a little fresh. A 
Workman's getting a few more looks underneath here for Jacksonville. Yeah, but the, and the, as you see, when he gets the ball, they're double teaming. They know he's a force in the paint. Uh, they're bringing a the double team every time he gets the ball. South Carolina State picks up a foul underneath. And you really, when you see Workman in the game, you know that Dave Bell is either in foul trouble or he's getting just a little bit of rest. I mean, Dave Bell has you know, gone off and on into the game tonight. We know that he's nursing an injury. The redshirt senior, if you're not familiar with Dave Bell, a transfer from Ohio State. Yeah, definitely with him out, out of the game uh, this game. The Dolphins are lacking rebounding. South Carolina State has dominated on the boards offensively and defensively. So with him out of the game, the Dolphins just have to come together as a team and put it to their mind that they have to rebound collectively. Amani Santos knocks down both shots at the line. The redshirt senior from Dorchester, Massachusetts for Jacksonville. Didn't get in the scoring column against Clemson, but did have four rebounds. That's also nice. A guy that you know can score, but can also contribute on the glass. Yeah, uh, very good for your point guard to get on the glass, especially with Dave Bell not in the game, and, and he was he didn't play at all against Clemson, but that was good for Amante Santos at his size to get in and get some rebounds. Left-handed shot up and no good. Applewhite has been quiet the last few minutes for South Carolina State. He's their go-to man, averaging 12 points a game. Right on cue, there's Workman working around the post. I, I mean, when he gets the ball in the post every single time, he's looking to score, he's going to get fouled. Something positive happens for the Dolphins. Little baseline jumper that time by Tashambe Riley. He was quiet in the first half. Again, you see the Bulldogs coming away with it on the glass. Applewhite comes up with a rebound. And Workman missed it from point blank range, but Jacksonville Got the rebound underneath, but a big swat coming from there on South Carolina State. A great offensive uh, rebound by Workman, Bryce Workman. Got him a second chance shot. Uh, it just happened to get blocked that time, but it was a great, great energy, great effort. You see the scramble there for the bat, for the basketball. And that was all ball that time by Applewhite. Dolphins with 10 to shoot. Great pass by Workman out of the low block. As I said, when he gets the ball down there, something positive is going to happen. He just has to make that layup. Sean Bay Riley working against Workman. Definitely not the shot you want from Amante Santos, especially, especially coming down. Nobody else touched the ball besides him. You want to get everybody involved, move the defense, get them shifted, and then you can get an open shot. Well, despite the missed shots and a couple of turnovers here early in this second half, the Dolphins have narrowed the gap against South Carolina State. Their biggest lead was 10 in the first half, and now South Carolina State says, wait a second. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to just widen that gap. You got to know they're looking to shoot the three this game. They're above their average now. The Bulldogs average five made threes a game, and they're certainly over that mark tonight. And we've also seen from the Bulldogs a couple of blocks here tonight. We saw one a moment ago for Applewhite. This is a team that doesn't necessarily have too many blocks against you. They average about a block and a half per game, but we've seen them assert themselves underneath on the defensive side tonight. You definitely have to against Jacksonville. They, they have a lot of good, great penetrators in the paint, and especially with Dave Bell down there, you have to get down there as a team and play defense. 
This shot that time by DeAnthony McCallum for Jacksonville. I like the, uh, the strategy by the South Carolina State coach. They take Apple White out knowing that there's a media timeout coming, get him a break, and also he has three fouls, so you definitely want to watch that. Another three-point opportunity missed that time by South Carolina State. scores on the assist that time by Dave Bell out of the double team there Aaron yeah great pass out of the double team if you see some if you see your man go double as as the as the player you definitely want to cut back door you have an open shot every time great assist by Mo Arnold just then as well he's, as I said he's learning behind the Monte Santos he's able to go either direction with both hands great pass and Jacksonville has found their rhythm now in the second half. The margin is now five as we got a timeout on the floor here in Jacksonville. It's here at the historic Swisher Gym on Monday, January 13th, where they host Autism Awareness Night and their first ASAP conference of Holman and JIT Highlanders tip off at 7 p.m. Welcome back here to historic Swisher Gymnasium on the campus of Jacksonville University. The Dolphins trailing by five against the South Carolina State Bulldogs, 46-41. Andrew Gibson alongside former JU Dolphin Aaron Hardy, Alexis Pierce on our sideline tonight. Second half action continues here in Jacksonville as the Dolphins have narrowed the gap now. They are only down by five, Aaron. Yeah, they're definitely playing a lot better. Uh, Mo Arnold come in. He's, he's re really leading this team, getting them in order, which is a great sign for the Dolphins. South Carolina State adds to their lead now. And right on cue, Mo Arnold again. He's definitely energized. He's talking to the other players. He's engaged in the game now. Mo Arnold has really been somebody that has lit, has lit the spark here, lit the fire for the Dolphins. And you never know with freshmen when they're going to figure this game, this college game out. And I feel like this is the game that he's figuring it out. He knows what he can do. He knows where everybody is. And he's looking good out there right now. The freshman from Picayune, Mississippi. continue to battle for it underneath and now a foul hard as two guys go down both for each team yeah definitely a battle under the boards it looks like we have a player hurt on the floor right now we have an injured player down for South Carolina State Forty-eight, forty-three. our score under 10 to go and we've got an injury timeout on the floor. You come to the right place. BSN Sports is a proud sponsor and the official athletics apparel provider for the Jacksonville University Dolphins. Dolphins trail 48-43. We look at the injury that just occurred a moment ago to Sean Bay Riley, the injured player for South Carolina State. To Sean Bay Riley, the... It definitely looked like somebody rolled onto his already injured knee. I'm not sure if it's an ACL or MCL. But you definitely don't like those type of injuries. A graduate transfer for South Carolina State right in his hometown, Orangeburg, South Carolina. Jacksonville misses the free throw shot that time by Deontay Wood. That's a tough loss for South Carolina State because he's one of their, their postmen. They don't have a lot of height on this team. And he's one of their tallest players. And we mentioned the blocks a minute ago. South Carolina State averaging a block and a half. They've doubled that tonight with three on the defensive end. <laughs> Dolphins once again trying to push it offensively down by five. And another quick turnover in the front court. 
Got to slow it down. You're only down five points. There's no rush. You have nine minutes to play. Just get a good shot. Get something that you want, not something that they're forcing you to have. But a good sign out of this is you're able to play Mo, Mo Arnold right now with Amante Santos on the bench, and you've been coming back. So you know once Amante Santos comes back in, it's going to improve the team even more. Three-point shot that time by Ian Kynard. A couple of new faces on the floor now for South Carolina State. Azante Fields is out there. Rasan Edwards, a freshman guard in the game tonight at this moment for South Carolina State. And once again, you see another offensive rebound. That's one thing that's keeping them ahead of Jacksonville right now is those offensive rebounds. One of the top scorers tonight, not playing due to a coach's decision. Rayshon Neal is out of the game this evening for the Bulldogs. They haven't had too many opportunities at the free throw line. They're two of five heading to the line at this moment for the Bulldogs as Jamari Etienne at the line and knocks down both of them. And now Zach Sellers, a focal point in the first half for the Bulldogs, checks back in. You see them jump back into their press, try to get Jacksonville off balance and out of control again. Quick turnovers, quick shots. Kevin Norman, DeAnthony McCallum, the guards here for the Dolphins. A three-point shot off the mark by Norman. There was no paint touch. Nobody drove the ball. It was all passing around the perimeter, and you end up with a contested shot like that. You could get that anytime. Zante Fields. Now back to Sellers. Interesting story yesterday. A South Carolina State alumnus, Darius Leonard, was in town yesterday playing for the Indianapolis Colts against the Jaguars. And I talked to Coach Garvin this morning. Darius Leonard, an all-pro in the NFL as a rookie, a former Bulldog at South Carolina State, very close with his program, and actually offered tickets to this South Carolina State team to go to the Jaguars game wow. against the Colts yesterday. But... South Carolina State got here late yesterday and just not able to get into the game as it was a 425 kick downtown here in Jacksonville. But Darius Leonard, as Coach uh, Garvin told me earlier today, a South Carolina State brother for sure and a big supporter of this program. And it's always good to have those connections in high places. Free ticket to an NFL game to see an all-pro. <laughs> Can't beat that. Darius Leonard had an interception yesterday against the Jaguars. Jacksonville finished six and ten on their season this year. Tough season. I think they just fired the coach. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, with the quarterback that they have, they can figure it out. Bulldogs with a seven-point lead in the basketball here. Applewhite misses a low post shot, and Dave Bell comes up with a rebound for Jacksonville. The only A Sun player averaging a double double this season. Yeah, he's only a few, few points and a few rebounds off of that mark uh, tonight's game. You know, talking to Coach Garvin, I asked him what the style of South Carolina State basketball is, and he said, you know, in a nutshell, our desire is to be known for our defense. Uh, this is a team that in their last four games have averaged about 80 points a game. And I got, they're probably not quite going to get there tonight as they've got 50 going in to this timeout. Welcome back here to Jacksonville University. Under seven minutes to go now. A seven-point lead here for the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. 
the story of this game so far, Aaron, is really the dominance by South Carolina State. They have had the lead 25 minutes and 43 seconds. The Dolphins had a lead only four minutes and 14 seconds. Yeah, they're definitely controlling the pace. They're speeding you up, slowing you down. And Dolphins just haven't been able to catch a rhythm this game and try to get under control. The biggest lead for South Carolina State tonight, 12 points. Their best scoring run was with 10 and a half to go in the first half where they scored 10 points in a row. And this game has only had two lead changes and it's only been tied once. Yeah, and I, I noticed Jacksonville doesn't have any player in double digits yet. And we're almost six minutes left in the game. Well, and another disparity is a couple of shots knocked down at the line for South Carolina State to make it 52-43. The second chance buckets for South Carolina State, they've got 12 on second chance opportunities. And right there you have another turnover by Jacksonville. A simple pass to the wing. Deontay Wood was not ready. He's coming out of the game now. Coach, coach wasn't having it. Well, another disparity that you see here in the second half, especially Jacksonville, that was their 11th turnover. South Carolina State is protecting the basketball. They only have five in this game. Yeah, uh, coach brought in Corey Romick, number two. He's definitely trying to get the guys going and bring energy, and that's one of the guys that does it. He's usually on the end of the bench waving the towel, so he's looking for anything right now to get these guys going. Sellers with it right wing. And you just see South Carolina State coming up with every second chance opportunity. The offensive rebounds have really been a focal point for them tonight. Yes, it has. It, their team rebounding, game rebounding. The whole team's crashing the glass. They know David Bell is hampered by injury. They have nobody in there that can stop them. So the whole team's going to the glass, getting easy points, second shot. And Romick picks up a foul. You mentioned him just into the game. And this is also, this is a tough game coming off a, a holiday break. You go home, you eat well, <laughs> uh, you come back, you try to practice hard and simulate game time speed, but it's definitely a difficult game if you're not focused. That time, Kynard with a miss underneath. Really a, a methodical type of possession that time for South Carolina State. But just trying to find their rhythm offensively, and they found a lot of it here tonight, especially in the first half. So far in the second half, prior to that break, they held a 15 to 13 second half scoring advantage on Jacksonville. Yeah, they're def definitely taking a lot of time off the clock each position. Uh, slowly but surely getting the shot that they want. And Jacksonville has to do something within five minutes if they want to win this game. Another point that Coach Garvin was talking about with the style of South Carolina State basketball, he said we want to guard you, want to win, limit you to one shot, and then rebound and push the ball. And we've seen that tonight from this Bulldog team. Definitely. They're definitely uh, changing the pace up on Jacksonville, limiting, limiting them to one shot and forcing turnovers. There's a turnover and transition now. One of the things, too, on the offensive side for the Bulldogs, Coach Garvin just emphasized taking the best shot for the team, not necessarily the player, because sometimes you'll say, well, uh, Sellers made his best shot maybe from the mid-range near the free throw line. Well, might be his best shot, might not be the best shot for the team, as we see a replay here. Exactly. I mean, I thought it was a great drive to the goal just then. It just, they, as you see, the whole team's in there trying to get an offensive rebound, and they just happen to go over the back, get an offensive foul. That's great team rebounding right there. If that foul's not called, they have an offensive rebound for an easy score. Bryce Workman at the line now for Jacksonville. His shot is up and good. Workman, the son of a 10-year NBA veteran, Haywood Workman, South who's, Carolina I believe, now an NBA official. So definitely in the bloodlines, a 10-year NBA veteran, as he's the son. Yeah, Bryce Workman, a great force down low. He definitely provides that inside presence for this team when David Bell's not on the floor. The 6'7 sophomore calmly knocks down the second free throw. 
Timeout on the floor, but we'll keep it right here with 5.14 to go in the game. The Bulldogs lead the Dolphins here. It's finally here. You can now download the Disney Plus app right now and start streaming the best of Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and the National Geographic. Ad free and wherever and whenever you want them. For more, go to DisneyPlus.com. Again, that's DisneyPlus.com. A 52-45 advantage right now for South Carolina State. They've led the majority of this game tonight against Jacksonville. A win for the Bulldogs would be their first on the road this season. They're 0-6 on the road to start this campaign. As we head into January, well, January and February is the meat of the conference schedule. Both teams will get conference play underway in their next contest. Coppin State is coming up for South Carolina State on the 4th of January as we turn the calendar over to 2020 and a new decade as well. It's good to see Tashaun Bay Riley back in the game. I know he went out earlier with the knee injury, but it's good to see him back on, in the game for the South Carolina State. Riley wearing a brace on that right knee. As they try to get it underneath that time to Kynard, the senior from Clayton, South Carolina. Kevin Norman, Kevin Norman picks up his second foul for Jacksonville. And now, Aaron, you get to the point in the game where South Carolina State is going to try to burn the clock but also contribute from the free throw line. Yeah, definitely. If they continue to make these free throws, continue to burn the clock out, it's going to be a slow kill for them. <laughs> Glad to have you with us here tonight on ESPN Plus from Historic Swisher Gymnasium. Second shot from Kynard is no good. Dolphins lead this series 7-3. The last win came last December. And Jacksonville in that last meeting. Came up with a big victory and non-conference play. That was a nice opportunity underneath that time, just missed by Kevin Norman. Yeah, great drive. He just happened to get up in the air and didn't realize how high and where he was on the court. But that was a great drive by Kevin Norman. Norman had 16 against Clemson, their last game. We've talked about the conference schedule for South Carolina State as they miss a shot underneath Workman with the rebound Jacksonville begins conference play against North Alabama on January 2nd that'll be an ESPN plus broadcast as well at North Alabama we've got a timeout on the floor South Carolina State continues to command this game with under four minutes to play in Jacksonville under four to play here in this ball game tonight. The Bulldogs of South Carolina State lead 52 to 45 over the homestanding Jacksonville Dolphins. Andrew Gibson alongside former JU basketball star Aaron Hardy. Let's now bring in the third member of our crew, Alexis Pierce. Uh, she's our sideline reporter tonight. And Alexis, what are you seeing tonight in this game, especially here in the second half? Well, they are doing a good job of containing South Carolina State and limiting them to one shot, but they aren't capitalizing in transition. Uh, Deontay Woods def definitely came off the bench and gave them a spark that they needed. Hopefully, JU um, continues to do what they need to do on the defensive end to limit them to scoring this half. All right, thank you very much to Alexis Pierce. Your courtside with us tonight. This is still a, a winnable game for Jacksonville. They're only down six points. A couple of shots, a couple of stops, they're right back in it. Drive to the basket, shot is up and no good, but going to the floor that time was DeAnthony McCallum grimacing as he went to the ground. Went to the floor.
as a junior, McCallum averaged 12 points a game over the last eight games of the season. He had 18 in the game at Lipscomb and later had a 19-point game against NJIT. So DeAnthony McCallum, and, and you know, he's somebody as well, Aaron, that you know, Coach Jasic was talking about him earlier today, really asserting himself both offensively and defensively this year. Yeah, he's one of the senior leaders on this team. He definitely brings a lot of confidence to the team and experience. Uh, as I said earlier, it's been an up and down season for him offensively. He struggled early, but lately he's been coming up, coming right along. Well, and if you're Jacksonville, you've got to be able to knock down shots here at the end of this game if you want to get back into it. And they're right within their reach of trying to take this game with three minutes left. win for South Carolina State would be their first on the road this season. They're 0-6 on the road. As they try to close out non-conference play, they'll play Coffin State as we turn over to 2020. There's Sellers driving left-hand of the lane. Very difficult shot by Sellers. Tough shot, great drive, uh, great shot when you make it like that. <laughs> now two and a half to go. Jacksonville's got to pick up the pace here. Shot that time by Amani Santos. And that's a guy that you want his you know, hands touching the ball late in games like critical situations such as this. Definitely. He happened to not miss that shot just then, but it was a good shot. They moved the ball around. He just happened to miss, and they definitely need those type of shots these last two minutes of play. Bulldogs trying to get it down low that time to Damani Applewhite. Certainly the leader of this Bulldog team. Over 12 points a game. The senior from Fayetteville, North Carolina. He's two, two rebounds short of a double-double. He definitely played well tonight against David Dale and Workman in the post. Just saw that shot, that left-handed lay-in by Zach Sellers. A pretty difficult shot, able to knock it in. Applewhite off the mark with his second. Quickly hustles back on defense. Kevin Norman had a chance at a three if he wanted it. Dave Bell underneath. Yeah. Feels like it's a little too late yeah. uh, for that. This, this is something they should have been doing a lot earlier in the game, getting him involved when he was in the game. You really feel that way. If you're a Jacksonville fan, you're thinking, where has that been all game from Dave Bell? We know he's dealing with an injury. He was a game time decision, didn't play last week against Clemson. Here's the go-to man, Applewhite, guarded by Bell and blocked. Dave Bell controlling it for Jacksonville. Oh. And now a block on the other end of Santos. Great defensive play by South Carolina State. They hustled back. They knew Santos was looking for the three-point shot and got back and got the block. A minute 10 to go. South Carolina State trying to hang on 54-49. Out of the timeout, they'll have 24 seconds to shoot. What are you thinking here if you're Jacksonville? What are you thinking if you're South Carolina State, Aaron? You know Jacksonville is coming out looking to shoot threes. As if you're South Carolina State, the one thing you don't want to do is foul on the three-point line, giving them a chance for a four-point play. You just want to contend, uh, control the ball, don't turn it over, and, and just play good, good basketball. South Carolina State with the lead, and they'll have the basketball coming out of this timeout. Look here at the block from behind. A stellar defensive play by Tariq Simmons. Yeah, as I said, you know Jacksonville is shooting the three ball right now. As a, just put your hands up. Try not to foul on the three-point line. You get out of here with an easy win. Well, I mentioned earlier that Damani Applewhite was a little bit quiet at the start of the second half. They've really tried to get him the basketball in the paint here in the last few minutes. And he's definitely delivered. 14 points, nine rebounds. He's definitely playing great basketball. Applewhite last year averaged about 16 and a half per game as a returning starter. Those numbers were as a junior. He's now a senior coming back. 
averaging over 12 points per game, but they've yet to really get into any of their conference games as they'll do on January 4th. Bulldogs with the basketball, a minute and change to go in this game. Still Sellers. A, still a two possession game, get a stop here, come down, make a three. Sellers blocked by Bell. Jacksonville with a rebound. Just as I said. <laughs> Anthony McCollum with a score in transition. Now it's a three-point game with 50 seconds to go, Aaron. Yeah, they got the stop. Now they got the score. Get another stop. Come back and score again. This is still a winnable ball game. We're not out of it yet. Well, it's amazing that South Carolina State has really controlled this game from the get-go. And right now it's a three-point game. Yeah, and you did this with a month of Santos off the court. Coach put in his defensive lineup for a reason, and it worked. It paid off. They got an easy bucket in transition. Now they're trying to look to do the same. They bring Dave Bell still back in, even though he's hampered by injury. That, that was a critical block for him. Both teams scoring under their average in this game, and I think some of that has to do with a little bit of rust coming off of the holiday break. We're seeing a game in the 50s where last four games for South Carolina State, they've scored nearly 80 in their last four games. So you see some of that defensive effort tonight by Jacksonville and a little bit of the holiday rust. Yeah, definitely. You come off a, a break like that, you, you're always going to have a little rust. South Carolina State a three-point advantage as they try to close it out here against Jacksonville. And Jacksonville's home floor. No good, rebound Jacksonville. Dave Bell gives Jacksonville a chance here. He put the ball in the freshman's hands right now. And Mo Arnold calls timeout for Jacksonville. They trail by three with 51, Seven. around 21 seconds to go as they have 51. Yeah, you see Coach Southern, Destin Barnes back in, Amante Santos, those are their best three-point shooters on the team. So you know what type of shot they're looking for coming out of the break. If you're Jacksonville and Coach Tony Jassic, who who's getting the ball? Which which players getting the ball in their hands with 21 seconds left? Uh, to me, I'm, I'm saying Destin Barnes. He, he's shown and he's proven that he's a great three-point shooter. But that's who I'm putting the ball in the hands of. Jacksonville trails by three, but they've got the ball and 30 seconds to shoot. This is not a situation, Aaron, where you have to rush a shot. Right. You can easily get a drive, drive and layup, score two points, and foul and hopefully they come down and miss their free throw shots and you can get another easy layup. But if, if not, you can just go for the tie right now, but you definitely have options. Now if you're Jacksonville, would your strategy be try a three-point shot or try something down low and maybe get fouled? Uh, if I'm Jacksonville, I'm going for the three. I just don't trust it. Low post wise, scoring wise, South Carolina has been playing great defense. I'd just go for the three if I was Jacksonville. Well, certainly the Dolphins could try a low post opportunity for Dave Bell and possibly get a foul, but also you run the risk of, you know, scoring that basket but not having the lead or at least tying it. Right, and they, they come back, make both free throws, and you're in the same predicament. Dave Bell is on the floor for Jacksonville, 21.9 to go. Dolphins trailing by three, and they'll inbound. Monty Santos with 20 seconds. Twelve to shoot, shot is up and no good. The miss by Barnes. Rebound underneath and a quick whistle. Yeah, you kind of knew they were going to him for the shot. Best three-point shooter on the team. And coach went for the tie. So Destin Barnes comes up empty on that three-point shot. And now a foul whistled against Jacksonville on the floor that will send Tariq Simmons to the line. And South Carolina State trying to ice this one away against Jacksonville, really try to salt this one away and ice the game. Well, Free throw their, shot is up and good. This will be their first away game win here, here tonight. He's definitely icing the game at the free throw line. Tariq Simmons, a very good free throw shooter as well. 
shooting 89% this season. Right now, all you have is a three-point shot, and hopefully you make it and get a quick foul. Jacksonville bringing it up the floor quickly. Three-point shot is up and no good for Kevin Norman. Rebound underneath as McCallum tried to battle for it down low for the Dolphins. Two seconds left in this game. Great offensive rebound by McCallum. Still showing that the game's not over. Go to the line, make both free throws, get a foul. He still believes they can win the game. McCallum will go to the line shooting two for Jacksonville. And South Carolina State looks like they're going to improve to one and six on the road. That will be their first road victory of the season. As coming up, a Sun men's basketball, Jacksonville against NJIT, another conference matchup as they get into conference play coming up on January 9th. And he tried to miss it and he made it. And Callum makes the second free throw, 56-52. Bo Arnold now picks up the foul, and that'll just about wrap things up as the inbound will come in just a second. And Aaron, South Carolina State's going to come away. It would appear a victory tonight. Yeah, they, they they really caught Jacksonville right out of the break. The team was really rusty, and it showed they had no rhythm tonight. Dave Bell hampered by injuries. The shooting wasn't exceptionally well, and South Carolina came up with a big one here tonight. Tariq Simmons, the 89% free throw shooter at the line for the Bulldogs. He knocks down both of them. A six point advantage, and that's going to do it. And South Carolina State comes on the road, and they win their first road game of the season. 58 to 52 here at Historic Swisher Gymnasium. They win it tonight as they will turn the page to 2020 coming up in their next game against Coffin State on January 4th. The Dolphins drop this game tonight at home by six points. Their next game as they turn over to the new decade and the new year will be January 2nd at North Alabama. Happy New Year to you, Aaron. We appreciate your time tonight. We thank you guys for watching here this evening from Jacksonville. For all of our ESPN Plus crew, I'm Andrew Gibson saying so long from Jacksonville and Happy New Year.